Welcome back to Doodles MD. I am your host, Falake Lawal, a public health. Digestion. In this week, we're going to be talking about the accessory organ system, um, which is the hepatobiliary system. And in the accessory, you know, we have the teeth, the tongue, the salivary glands, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. So in um, before we move into a lot of things, first, when we talk about the functions, we know we have the teeth, it just helps us to chew and break down food mechanically. We have the tongue, which is the muscle, it helps in talking, but in digestion, it helps to roll food down um, through our throat. We have salivary glands. We have three pairs, um, yes, three pairs um, of salivary glands, and this just helps to secrete a fluid that lubricates the food when we're chewing, when we're swallowing. It also contains an enzyme that helps to start the digestion process, especially for um, sugar-based foods. Uh, the other part when we talk about function is the liver. So the liver has extensive functions and it's one of the very important organs in the body that's not just doing digestive work. So one, the liver um, synthesizes, which means it produces. The liver produces um, cholesterol, um, triglycerides, which are types of fats. Um, the liver also produces a large storage form of glucose that's called glycogen and it stores it so it produces when you get glucose from the from the gut into the blood it flows into the liver the liver picks up all the single pieces of glucose and joins them to form a storage form called glycogen another is proteins different types of proteins we have a lot of proteins in our blood like albumin you may have heard of albumin before when you're talking about globulins there are also types of uh, proteins that are in the blood clotting factors are very important in in being able to balance blood flowing when you have a cut and you and you need that place to clot to stop bleeding clotting factors come in very handy and the liver produces a good number of them Another is transport proteins. We call them transport proteins. These are proteins that their function is to move certain things. For instance, ferritin, even though it's an inflammatory marker, but it's also a protein that carries iron. So when you don't have enough ferritin, you cannot properly transport iron through the blood to where you need it. Other ones like ceruloplasmin, which carries um, copper, and a bunch of stuff we have um, amino acids also that are formed and vitamins that are also synthesized in the liver the second function is storage it stores glucose in form of glycogen it stores vitamins a d e and k it also stores vitamin b12 it stores minerals like copper zinc manganese and iron the third function of the liver is detoxification our excretion it helps to process um, things that could harm us or that we don't need anymore like medicines alcohol hormones ammonia that we produce we get a lot of ammonia from meat or nitrogen rich uh, plants so all of these things can be harmful to us if they are in a certain state so the liver processes or metabolizes them and then excretes them also through the bile um, and it goes out into the feces. The last is removal of old red blood cell. A red blood cell spends 120 days. That's the life, that's the normal lifespan. And once it gets old, it gets um, broken down in the liver. And here, some of the byproducts of the heme is, because it has heme and globin right and globin is one of the things like i said the liver produces so the heme gets broken down and that's part of where we get that greenish yellow bile um the other part is the pancreas which uh, produces digestive um juices to aid in digestion 
the other part the other function of the pancreas is production of hormones that either help in regulation of glucose production storage breakdown um, also it produces hormones that aid in bowel movement and blood flow the gallbladder is another one which it's just a sac it's a muscular sac that stores bile and releases as needed into the small intestine next we're going to talk about the structure of these organs welcome back so we're talking about the welcome back we're moving on to the structure of the accessory organs of the gi system and here i'm going to be focusing on the salivary glands the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. For the salivary glands, there are three pairs of them, um, one set on each side of the face, one is here right in front of the ear at towards the back of the jaw, another one is underneath um, the tongue, this one right here is underneath the tongue, and then the last one, the submandibular, is right under on the inside of the jaw bone and these um, glands produce saliva the consistency varies with the stimulus and the saliva goes through the duct this one releases into the side of the cheek and the other two on the bottom um, release their juice on through the underneath um, under surface of the tongue so the saliva is helpful in moisture, in keeping the mouth moist, um, lubricating food and aiding um, swallowing and digestion. When we come down to the liver, um, it's located on the right upper side of the belly. The diaphragm would be somewhere right here and it would be under that where the ribs are. The liver happens to be the largest and the heaviest organ in the body. It weighs about 1.5 on kilograms on the average. The widest width of the liver is about 15 centimeters, which is six inches. We can see that blood, multiple blood vessels are going into it. And here, this is the inferior vena cava. This is the big blood vessel that connects to the heart. This is the big blood vessels that comes down from the heart and this gives blood into the liver through the hepatic artery. The liver also gets blood from um, the gut and that goes in and divides into the segments. So you can see the liver has two main physical lobes that you can see and that's helpful when they're doing liver transplant because you can donate this left tip of the liver but functionally the liver has four lobes on the inside and it has eight segments based on the divisions for blood distribution one two three four five six seven we have one two four here two here and then two here so we can see the gallbladder here also coming down and emptying into here so here we can see the eight um, segments that the liver divides into based on the blood supply. And each of these segments, um, the blood vessels now divide into tiny, into tiny um, lobules that are like tall sheets and columns of liver cells packed together with blood vessels running in between them. So you can see this is kind of like a schematic um, representation of you can of cells and then the blood vessels are going in between it and the lobule contains millions and millions of cells because it will run all through the length of that segment and in between the blood vessels are in the middle um bile um, tract also are in between the cells but also there is the demarcation of the of the lobules also has connective tissue in between which is fibroelastic so it can expand but not too much and this becomes important in um, liver in liver disease where things get tougher and it cannot expand or it's even shrinking 
too much. So if we come here and look at like a cut section of the lobule, the brown um, representations here are the liver cells. Here we can see the um, on the per on the sur on the outside where you have the three vessels, right? The um, hepatic artery, the portal vein. And then you see the bit, the bowel tract is called the portal triad, right? Three of them are on here. And there's a funny, this is not a good schematic, but there's a funny um, picture that we get on ultrasound where it looks like a Mickey Mouse head where the, the hepatic, the portal vein forms like the head of Mickey and then the biliary tract and the hepatic artery kind of forms the ear. So it gives that um view but here on this side you can see the arrow that this blue one which is the portal vein dumps its blood and it's flowing towards the middle the artery also is flowing towards the middle and there's this diagrammatic representation where the red and the blue are forming purple but as they are flowing through the cells so many things are happening oxygen is taking out nutrients are taking out waste product is put in um uh, and um Carbon dioxide is also put in. Now we can also see here on this side that this arrow is flowing out. So bile is flowing to the other way in the opposite direction as the blood and that collects in the bile canaliculi. The bile canaliculi empties into the biliary duct and that flows out. Going to the pancreas here, we can see that it is on the inner part behind the, uh, the stomach and the blood um the ducts that's emptying the pancreas joins with the bile ducts and then opens into the second part of the um small intestine finally here is just a schematic of the uh biliary tract system emptying and bringing um bile out some of it goes into the gallbladder for storage and the rest can come directly into the intestine um, for digestion so with that we would move on to the process of uh, supporting digestion with the accessory organs now uh, we're going to talk about the process um, so first when we're starting from the mouth, we know we have the salivary glands. I mentioned that we have, um, we already talked about having three pairs of them. And these respond to stimuli from either taste, smell, or thinking about food, and they produce um, the juice. They have a gland, it's a gland, and they have tracts that open into the mouth and release. And sometimes this can get blocked or they can get inflamed or infected. If you've ever seen a picture or somebody that has mumps, that's um, inflammation of the pancreas, of the salivary gland in the back here. So that can happen there. When we move down to the liver, so the liver gets blood flow from two places. One is the blood that's coming directly from the heart, which is the hepatic artery, but it also gets blood flow from the gut. More, a lot of the blood that's going into the liver is actually from the gut because it's carrying a lot of this nutrient rich food um, into there. And so when it gets there, the, the structure of the smallest part of the liver they have cells that are lined up it's kind of like in a hexagonal shape and it has like a center so the center blood is flowing from the outside in passes through the cells and goes in towards the center right and as the blood is passing through you know it's bringing in this nutrient rich oxygen rich foods the cells do what they need to do either they are um, removing toxins or they are taking out uh, the glucose um, pieces of the uh, fat small fat molecules to produce cholesterol and things and so they are taking they are releasing and doing all of the things they need to do and the blood flows towards the center in the center is where you have they call them a centriole 
center or basically and um, these collect the blood that now is going to return to the heart so all of these collect together and they form the hepatic vein right now where does the bile come in on the outside right where you have the two blood supply that comes in which is the portal vein and the hepatic artery the bile duct is also on that so they form a triad because it's three of them they form a triad right on the outside of each cluster of cells but of but in difference as blood is flowing in towards the center bile flows the other way through its own tracts right bile flows the other way out because you don't want bile to be going into your heart right so it's produced and it goes back on the other side towards the out and it converges into the biliary tract and depending on what you need it might the bile might directly be secreted into the small intestine or it goes into the gallbladder where it's stored and it waits um for for me the pancreas um again we talked about like it has kind of like two ways that it functions the digestive juices get secreted out into the tract and the pancreatic duct opens right close to where the biliary um tract opens into the small intestine and that helps in digestion the other part of it is the hormonal part the hormones that it secretes like insulin these just flow directly into the blood and it doesn't go into the gut it stimulates the gut but it's through the blood that it does that so that would kind of cover just the process of how um the accessory organ system the hepatobiliary system aids and supports digestion um, i'm going to put a pin on it here for now we would explore these further uh, when we start talking about all the disease states in in more details thank you again uh, for tuning in share your thoughts and questions on uh, today's episode next episode we're going to be talking about the urinary system yeah so i hope you've subscribed to our channel and that you've been liking all of my videos please um do the needful i would really appreciate it share the video with your friends and follow us on social media till next time and for like and la wow signing out on to those bye